By 1929, American law enforcement is proclaiming prohibition a success. But most Americans don't buy it. The editor of the Detroit Free Press, Malcolm Bingay, he wrote that it was extremely difficult to get a drink in Detroit during Prohibition. You'd have to walk into a bar and shout really loudly above the noise of the crowd so that the bartender could hear you. To satisfy a thirsty nation, gangsters like Al Capone operate illicit distilleries and smuggle in liquor from other countries. Hard alcohol could be imported from Europe, from Canada, from the Caribbean. It could be something that was sold at a fairly high price point to eager consumers. Demand barely falters. And targeting the middleman, the bootlegger, isn't enough. As more and more industrial alcohol is rerouted to the speakeasy market, the federal government intensifies its efforts to curtail demand without threatening supply. The country can't run without industrial alcohol. It was in everything from perfume to laundry detergent. This is the primary source of illegal alcohol in the country. So what the government then looked at was, can we do something to this alcohol that makes it much riskier to drink and use that essentially as a chemical enforcement of prohibition? December 25th, 1926, a man runs into a New York City emergency room, crying that Santa Claus is chasing him with a baseball bat. And then he shortly thereafter dies and you have 65 other deaths in the same day. Charles Norris, the medical examiner of New York City, determined that all 65 of them were due to additives in industrial alcohol that had been required by the federal government. Among the additives is methyl alcohol. More than unpleasant, it's a poison. Methyl alcohol is very dangerous because when your body breaks it down, it breaks it down into some uniquely poisonous compounds. Some of the hazards are going to be blindness, dementia, and of course the last horrible effect is you're gonna die. One could say, and some people did say, that the federal government itself was a willing party in the poisoning of people because they were adding this to alcohol that they knew was going to be repurposed and sold as beverage alcohol. Charles Norris made a public statement directly accusing the U.S. government of poisoning American citizens, a minimum of 10,000 deaths nationwide. It sparks outrage across the nation. Over the course of the next year, deaths from industrial alcohol rarely leave the headlines. 